What's up? Welcome back. In case you are just joining us, my name is Jane Mumboy. Glad you have chosen to uh, continue with us on this uh, Tuesday conversations that we are having here in studio. We want to move on to the next conversation. But before we do that, remember, we'd absolutely love to know where you're watching us from. So check in on Twitter using the hashtag Good Morning Kenya. Our official station handle ever remains to be at KBC Channel 1. And do tag my colleagues and I at Doreen at Ray Manyara and at Jane Wamboy is how you can find us across all the social media platforms. And just to send out love to all who have already checked in, I see Lydia Kenyanjui, um, there is Kanini Mwaura, I see Kareze, <laughs> um, there is Caleb. Caleb Soy, thank you for tuning in. I also see Mtonajita Chelsea updates. Thank you so much. Michelle Kihu, um, Robert, who's also tuned in all the way from Kayole, thank you so much. Lee Zangash, thank you so much for tuning in. Do let us know where you are watching us from. Once again, hashtag is Good Morning Kenya. So we move on to the next conversation and we are on to our women at the forefront segment all about women who are doing fantastic things to break that glass ceiling that society has put there to limit our efforts and all that we are trying to do to change the narrative and we have one lady with us in studio this morning she is Winnie Kabintier there she is on your screen team natural can we sit too <laughs> Winnie Kabintier she is a youth media advocate as well as a gender advocate hi Winnie hi Jim good morning Karibu sana to Good Morning Kenya. Thank you. You could start by maybe saying hi to our viewers and giving us the social media handles. Hello, hi, I'm Winnie Kabinte. Um, on Twitter, you can find me at Winnie Kabinte, on Facebook as well, and Instagram at Winnie Kabinte. Ah, it's Kabinte, not Kabinte. You it's know? Kabinte, actually. Oh, Kabinte. Oh, okay, yeah. so I wasn't wrong. <laughs> yeah. We are very particular with people's names. Mm -hmm. And they can sue you. <laughs> so, Winnie really Kabinte. Yes. All right. So, you can check her out on social media. If you have any questions that you feel you want to direct to her, you can do so on her social media platforms. So so let's get to know you a bit better before we get to this amazing journey and project that you have been on. Mm -hmm. Who is Winnie in a nutshell? Uh, in a nutshell, Winnie Kabinti is a um, change agent. Yes. That's in a nutshell. I'm passionate about impacting my community and mm -hmm. particularly uh, being a voice to the voiceless and empowering the youth to become active citizens. Yes. And where did all this stem from? Is it from something that happened to you or mm -hmm. something that you witnessed or something that was really bugging you that mm -hmm. is very normal, very, very casual in the society? Um, I think I would say it uh, stems from my childhood mm -hmm. and that is what informed my career in media. Uh, I've always been that kid who speaks up for people yes. and I've always been uh, that person who refuses to look away when there's an injustice. Mm. So I always got into trouble defending other people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, yeah, I just decided to escalate it further when now I grew up and got into the career field. Yes. Yes. And at what point did this whole conversation about, you know, menstrual hygiene management and issues to do with sanitary challenges that so many young girls face mm. come into the picture? Uh, this came into the picture sometimes in 2018. Yeah. So what happened is that um, I leverage on social media a lot. I'm just uh, keen on the digital media space. Yes. So in 2018, um, a story went viral on social media. It was done by a journalist from Tuko, mm -hmm. and she highlighted the plight of um, women in street families, particularly in the Majengo slums, and their access to menstrual products. So I remember when I saw the story, I just couldn't let it slide. You know, the way you see a story and like, oh, this is happening and that's it. So I thought, okay, actually I have never thought about how um, the less privileged people manage menstruation. So I realized, actually, you know, this packet of sanitary towels, it's one of those things that in your day-to-day -day monthly shopping, it's very insignificant. Yeah, you don't pay attention to it. for most people. Exactly. And then I realized, oh my God, this is actually a luxury. Because if you look at um, majority of our population, we mm -hmm. survive below a dollar in a day. Yes. And on average, a packet of menstruation 
actual uh, a packet of sanitary towel goes for 50 bob. Mm. So if you are surviving, if you even have 100 bob as a family, you need to buy unga, you need to buy sugar, mboga. At what point will you buy pads and maybe you have more than uh, two girls in the family? So I decided to mobilize guys on social media. Mm -hmm and donate towards uh, these families. So it became a big deal, and we started actually with the hashtag Just a Pad. It became a big deal. The uh, woman rep joined us, and we went to Majengo. But then when I got there, I thought at first it would just be, you donate, and that's it. And I'd love to hear the actual situation that you found on ground. Just paint for us a picture, at least mm -hmm. for even who is watching us at home, to understand mm -hmm. what you saw firsthand. Exactly. So uh, then when we went there, uh, of course, we found um, the group of uh, women. Mm -hmm. And this was in a particular, you know, um, in the slums, they call them bees or in city families they call them bases so this is where they reside it's a corner in one uh, a part of the community so we found a lot of uh, uh, mature women and young girls as well so uh, we gave them the sanitary towels and I remember some of them were actually telling us you know we need more than just the sanitary towels because mm. you see that's just one it's like giving one them fish yeah. exactly and then that will last them for maybe that man and the next man and then what's next yeah and then I also realized um, they were dealing with a lot of reproductive health issues like mm. I remember one girl also approached me and she said um, thank you for bringing these products but uh, could you please pass by maternity um, women's which was just around the corner and just take some and baby clothes to one of our friends she's given birth last night and she doesn't have anything and so now you can imagine so we went there thinking it's just this but you realize there's a lot of reproductive so health more. issues yeah. you also realize the women are um, extremely for lack of a better word um, fertile because <laughs> you see one they are homeless and maybe someone has five kids or even two kids yeah. so you realize it, uh, they actually need a sustainable campaign or a solution that seems to sensitize them around reproductive health issues mm -hmm. and even menstruation because menstruation is not all about um, getting a pad and that's it yeah. it's about uh, menstrual hygiene management it's also about how you dispose uh, the waste yeah. otherwise it uh, goes and pollutes our environment it becomes an environmental issue exactly and I'd like for us to talk a bit as, uh, about some of those issues that are in this conversation and more so looking at these ladies that you were able to interact with. And one thing that clearly is evident and is a concern is the lack of information revolving around fertility issues, uh, sexual and reproductive rights, as well as menstrual hygiene management. As it is, there clearly is a gap. Yeah. What more do you feel can be done to just try and get the information, something that is free to these young girls and ladies who are in that space in a way that they will understand mm. and put it to practice? Uh, great. Uh, indeed, that is quite a major challenge. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the biggest intervention that we can do now is first acknowledging that, yes, there is a problem. Mm -hmm. And again, tailoring solutions first in a language that this demographics understand yeah because we'll have a lot of publications that are in so much english going there and with pamphlets exactly somayo. Um, uh, nini, tumi a condom. Yeah. and you are not telling them why you know um so i think we need to tailor the language in a way that these people understand it. Mm -hmm. And also the people who are communicating this information, are they communicating it from a, a friendly uh, level or are you just sitting there on a high host and mm, just, you know, you people, and, exactly. Mm. So and um, that's why for us at Just A Pad, we use the pad actually as a connection. So like, because menstruation is um, a monthly affair. Mm. So every month as we interact with these women, as we're giving them, you create some, some sort of friendship with them. So they find it easy to come and relate to you. You mm. find it easy when a girl comes and tells you, um, I'm itching, what can I do? And you're able to advise them on even how to manage themselves, how to um, uh, clean up or even where to go and seek medical attention. Because mm. the other challenge that we've also seen is that, um, and maybe this is something we've also grown up with as much as uh, some of us are from maybe um, better privileged uh, families. Yeah. Uh, for a girl, until the time you become a uh, grown-up and you go for your own um, gynecological appointment, 
we are hardly given any reproductive health services at mm. all, mm. at all. So yeah, I think this is something we also need to recognize and understand that uh, I think once a girl reaches a puberty, there are a lot of reproductive health situations. So we need to come up with also very youth friendly uh, mm -hmm. services as well. So that if I go as a teenager to a clinic right now, yeah. I won't be told, don't attack a family planning and yeah, yeah. your mama. <laughs> I, <laughs> exactly. I completely understand that because mm. you know, even for so many grown-up women a visit to the gyna is just na pressure yeah. and this is a whole grown-up person so you can imagine a young 14 16 year old who may be going through reproductive challenges mm. and they are not in a space where they can comfortably go to see a professional for that matter so I completely agree with that we need to have teen friendly visits and conversations with professionals now <clears throat> excuse me another aspect that I'd like to understand its role in this whole conversation about menstrual hygiene management and the project that you have been on is the issues to do with poverty and finances and how it has contributed to the so to the challenges that these young girls are facing in mm. that space uh, great. Indeed, uh, poverty is one of the biggest contributors of uh, teenage pregnancies. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is because, as we said, if you look at our economic status as a country, it's not really that good. Majority of us live uh, below the poverty, poverty line. line yeah. And so, um, yes, the government has a very ni uh, nice program, the National Free Primary um, Sanitary Towels Program, which targets um, kids in primary school for now the plan is to have everyone covered in high schools and other institutions yeah. but for now it's primary schools but again we have seen that these products are not even reaching uh, these kids because availability is another question exactly and then there's also graft associated with it mm. in the cause of that thanks to our country <laughs> so yes so accessibility of these products becomes a challenge so you find a girl yes she's there the situation is that there's no way to run around menstruation it has come mm. what do you do first um you need to contain yourself and if you don't have the right uh, materials you end up uh, either getting an infection or you end up smelling so first they do not want to deal with that they are girls they're at that pe uh, period where they are so self-cautious mm. you know that stage as a girl Oof. you mind everything how people perceive you so what do you do you know some guy somewhere, either it's that Boda Boda Rider or that Makanga mm -hmm. or just any man who seems to have something Who's and he can offer you, yeah. offer you with that. Then that's how girls are falling into this. Others are ending up um, either dropping out of school and taking up jobs just to afford the basic things. Transactional sex is a reality that so many young girls have to deal with. Exactly. A sad reality for that matter. Mm. And this brings me to the next aspect, issues to do with cultural barriers. Is it something that you found to be a problem in the particular area that you were in? Or because we know in some parts of the country, culture mm. has become such a hindrance to so many young girls and especially where menses are involved. Is it something that you saw was a problem or it's not much of a problem where you were? Um not much for now because mostly we are in Nairobi and yeah. the culture is a bit different but then I would say in some way yes because um, people are not so receptive to other forms of um, menstruation products yes we know the sanitary pads are the common <coughs> ones but you know we have things like uh, tampons and mm. we have also things like the reusable sanitary towels mm. and now if you look at most of um, our communities for us, even as much as we try and give these sanitary kits, sometimes it's not sustainable because first the project is self-funded, finances are, are, are a challenge. Mm. So sometimes you might want to ask girls, you know, you're looking at the situations they are in and you're like, it's okay, just have at least two reusable sanitary towels that you can, you know, keep as a backup mm -hmm. when you don't have these. But then people are feeling... Uh, and you still understand, yes, yeah. you still understand. But then I think uh, people need to open up their minds because even we have other things like uh, tampons and I've come and to learn. And menstrual cups these and days. And menstrual cups as well, yeah. exactly. And you know, I even came to learn that uh, things like menstrual cups and the tampons, they really help a lot, especially for people who have extreme heavy flows. Yeah. 
So I think people need to yani, just change their mindsets. Usi stick to naile. The traditional family. way of doing things. Exactly. And all right, let, let's talk a bit about, you know, the role that our women leaders are playing in all this. You had mentioned that you had the opportunity to even have the women rep join you. But... Mm -hmm. Was this just a one-time affair and are they really involved? Do we have enough women leaders who are actually going down to mm. the ground, the actual ground, and seeing the situation that so many young girls have to deal with on a daily? Um, honestly I, speaking. Honestly speaking, I think when politicians um, intervene in such situations, it's usually uh, most of the time due to the sensation mm. and the publicity I around want such crises. Exactly. But I wish uh, we could have more sustained approaches. Because I remember like even at that time, um, we were really keen on installing uh, collection uh, bins around um, most of the malls just to get donations. It's easy when you're doing your shopping and you buy sanitary towel and drop yeah, compared yeah. to sending yeah. people money. And at that time we were even seeking for the support of the county at that time and things just went hush hush. You know, yeah, so I wish people would, uh, the leaders would just be more proactive into this. Even for the uh, National Free uh, Sanitary Towels Program, mm -hmm. uh, they are the best custodians because they are women. They understand how these things are happening. So they are the ones who should even ensure that um, in schools these products are getting there. Yeah. So without their input, we can have all the nice policies and these programs, but they just remain just nice figures on paper. Okay. Yeah. Now, you have mentioned the role of the county government, and for some, one might argue that they are quite detached. They are not as alive to the situation because they may be like, okay, we'll give you sanitary towels. Mm -hmm. But then... This is somebody who just doesn't need a sanitary towel. They need yeah. other, an undergarment to hold that sanitary towel. And that yeah. is not something that maybe someone there in a leadership position may be alive to. How then do you feel they can effectively be part of this conversation and actually contribute in a way that benefits this young girl in a way that they feel this is actually helping me and not just shining their name up with Voju, saying that they helped and glorifying them? Um, I think the main way would be working with, um, uh, with the CSOs and CBOs, the community-based organizations, yeah. uh, that are involved in these things. Like now, if you look at... Um, the government may not be everywhere. Yes, yes, you have the policies, they've done their part, but when it comes to the evaluation, while they want to work on the ground, mm -hmm. they should work with uh, such initiatives, like even ours, because now we are on the ground, we are interacting with these people on yeah. a day-to-day -day basis, so we are able to um, identify some of their other plights and challenges they struggle with. Mm. So I think it requires for a collaborative approach yes. uh, between the government and the non-governmental organizations. All right. Yeah. Now, for those who are watching us this morning and they're wondering how they can be part of this mm -hmm. and also um, just looking at also not just giving them sanitary towels mm. because therein also comes the question of quality. Okay. Um, we ha I know as women, there's a time kulikuwa na your conversation in Kweme Wakamoto on social media mm. regarding the quality of sanitary towels that is available in the market because some sanitary t uh, towels are used and they bring secondary issues yeah. with them. So maybe someone is watching us this morning and they want to contribute to the course. What forms of assistance mm. do you feel are necessary for this conversation uh, particularly for our initiative yes yes Ah, great. So, um, first, other than the menstrual health and sensitization, we run a teen mentorship program. Okay. And we focus on areas such as career guidance, um, mental health. So we are always in need of um, young professionals who can come in and pro uh, uh, offer guidance to these teenagers. Mm -hmm. So you can connect with us on social media mm -hmm. at Just A Pad Initiative on Facebook, at Just A Pad K on Twitter and on Instagram as well. Also, uh, you can reach out to me from Winnie Kabinti on social media. And uh, as far as these sanitary kits are concerned... Yeah, we'll be getting to that in a bit because uh, we also want to understand the contents they're in, uh -huh. how much a package costs exactly. for even somebody to be able to actually mm. contribute and say, I helped five girls exactly. and hold you accountable. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe let's just even get into that. Mm -hmm. You have the hashtag is just the pad yes, on just social pad. media. Yes. You can be able to just search in just the pad and understand the conversation that has been ongoing for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. And 
you go around giving young girls this particular package. What is in there? So here, uh, we call it the Dignity Kits, and the reason why we had this, it's because it at least safeguards the dignity of someone, other than just giving in um, a packet of sanitary towel, um, a packet of underwear, or uh, underwear and, and soap. Mm -hmm. So usually, depending on availability of products, we have two packets of sanitary towels, two um, uh, pieces of underwear and soap. For the soap, most of the time, we try and have uh, the all-purpose soap, Mm -hmm. Because again, of the nature of these communities, uh, we reach out to at least if you have all purpose, um, yeah. someone and then it's bigger, so someone can decide to cut it. One goes for showering, and a bit goes to something else. Because there's really the situation is dire. Okay. If you go to those communities, you'll you'll notice. Yes. So on so average, how much does a package cost? In, on your end? Uh, on our end, uh, one, one sanitary kit, we will say about 150 shillings. Okay. Yeah, because we get the contents in uh, bulk, wholesale mm. prices, so we will estimate it to be around 150 shillings. 150 shillings. Yeah. All right. So maybe if you're watching us this morning and you want to help a young girl out there, it will only cost about 150 sh Kenya shillings to assist one young lady be better dignified go onto social media check the hashtag just a pad see the initiative see how you can come into this conversation and again it's not just about the financial or material provision you can also go and just talk to these young girls give information information is power give them the information that they need to know on how to take care of themselves and especially once they hit puberty. Remind us of your social uh, handles once more so that our viewers can interact with you further, even post this conversation. At Winnie Kabinti on Twitter, at Winnie Lando Kabinti on Facebook, Kabinti on uh, Instagram. So if they want to contribute to the course, that is how they can be able to get in touch. Yes, and the hashtag is just a pad. All right. Thank you so much, Winnie. That is all the time we had for this particular conversation. But we wish you the best Thank as you, you continue with this beautiful journey to just make our young girls feel comfortable mm -hmm. in the spaces that they are in. She is Winnie Kabintia. She is a youth media advocate as well as a gender advocate and also championing for the hashtag just a pad. Check them out on social media and support however you can. All right, so we have come to the end of this particular segment.